how to use make.com for beginners hi guys welcome back to another video and in today's video i'm going to be telling you how you can use make.com as a complete beginner so having said that let's just jump into the video so for those of you who don't know what make.com is make.com is an application with which you can use to go ahead and automate or connect or design different workflows without any coding necessary so let's get into it it's basically like zapier but you know it's free so over here as you can see it says no credit card required no time limit on the free plan you can get started for free and down below you can see a little bit of visual representation of what is happening so you have made a form you know then in response to that form you can go ahead and notify the team create a record or send an email basically that's what it is you know you're visualizing your workflow so let's go ahead and create an account and get started with it now this is free but there is a pricing plan which we'll get to that later so let's go ahead and click on get started for free for now now over here you can go ahead and sign up with your google account or facebook or github account or you can just simply add in your name email password and sign in so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to continue with google so when you first log in this is how it's going to be looked like so when you first log in this is what you are going to see this is going to be your dashboard and here you can see some examples of what to do so we'll get to that later at the top you have all of your main options such as teams users subscriptions payments installed apps variables scenario properties on the left hand side you have your other options which are exactly like these ones such as teams scenarios templates and webhooks and more right so how does this work so over here you have active scenarios these are basically your shortcuts your automations or your zaps such as zapier calls it and here you can create scenarios so for example uh when this happens do this right so for example let's say a trigger uh, a new email is received or let's say a new sheet in google is added then select the action which is going to be send an email or send a message on slack or you know create a compilation on chat gpt so you can do this over here if you want more options for scenarios click on scenarios right here on the left hand side and you will see all of them over here and you can create a brand new scenario by clicking on the create new scenario button is going to load up over here here you can go ahead and add the application that you want you can search for different applications over here so let's say that uh, for example you've created or completed a task in uh, let's say ClickUp or any other website like that or let's say you someone has sent you a message you know depending on what you want to do so for example let's say uh, someone has completed a, a task and they've uploaded a video onto the team drive here you can do this someone has uploaded a folder or a file here you go upload a file right someone uploads a new file then here we're going to go ahead and create a new connection right it's going to create a connection we need to go ahead and log in into our google drive and after you've made the connection what you want to do is you want to click on add another module and here what you want to do is basically add the action so we've added the trigger which is to upload something on google drive then the trigger could be send a text to the team on slack or instagram business or whatsapp whatever you want to do right so let's say we select whatsapp or do we have other options over here as you can see we have a bunch of different options although i don't find an application that i can use to do that let's select slack for now all right so we'll just select slack where is it here we go so we'll select the slack and we'll send a create a message update a message where is the option we'll just say create a message right here we go so now in order to actually make sure that these work we need to go ahead and connect our account so for google we have to create a connection all right and for slack we also have to enter in our slack account and once we do that this will work we can go ahead and test it out later now uh, to connect the google drive it's a little bit tricky because if we click over here uh, we'll just say right we'll type google connection this is going to be your connection name and to connect it it's actually a little bit tricky all right because if we just simply go ahead and click on sign in with google 
it's going to verify the connection and it's going to say that it's not possible to use restricted scopes with customer Gmail accounts. So uh, it's a little bit tricky to go ahead and integrate them with. Uh, you have to make sure that you know you have Google API services enabled and you can also follow this guide right here to basically show you how you can connect it. So over here, make sure to click create a connection optional create the connection field. So make sure that you do all of this. You have to enter in your Google client credentials over here. So make sure you add them as well. So keep that in mind, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. But once you do that, it should work because for that, you need to create a Google Cloud console account or console project. And if we come over here into Google console, uh, you have to create one over here. You have to enable the API. And once you do that, you should be good to go. As you can see right here, then you need to configure your OAuth constant screen, create your client credentials and make sure to connect them. So basically, once you do that, you come over here, click on the advanced options. Then you just add your client ID and client secret text, and that will integrate your Google Drive. So it's a little bit tricky, but you can do that. Same with the Slack. You have to log in into your Slack account. I don't think it's going to be that hard. So we just simply click on create Slack connection, enter the connection type, we'll say user, and make sure you've logged into your Slack account. So if we click over here, we'll go to slack.com, log in, and then we can just simply go ahead and click on save. It's going to open up our Slack. we have already logged in into my Slack account over here, and we should be good to go. We just click on allow. As you can see, this is the workspace that we have right now, test workspace. And I believe it should do it now over here we select the channel what we want uh, we can enter in manually uh, we click on select from list over here you're going to have all of your channel type we'll say direct message all right we can select the user here uh, it's going to load up we can select ourselves and over here we can select the type what it is that we want to add so here you have a bunch of different options so we'll just say we want to should be an option we'll just pick any of these you want over here as you can see let's say uploaded a file uh, file name file id file name and we have file time is there a time option modified by me by time viewed by me over here you have shared i think that looks good yeah after that you just simply go ahead and select the block you want and once that's done you just simply click on ok and there you go so now, whenever someone uploads something, you will have a direct message to your Slack. You can modify it, whatever you want, but yeah, generally this is it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing and how much it costs. As you can see, it is completely free. Over here, you have a hundred ops per month, so you can create a hundred operations. Uh, no code necessary, over 1000 plus, you know, applications. So basically free version is really cool. But uh, if you go ahead and go to the core, which is going to be $9 per month, you will have 10,000 ops per month. Everything in the free plan plus you get unlimited active scenarios, minimum one minute interval between scheduled scenarios, access to make your own APIs. And over here for the next one, which is the pro version, costs you $16 per month. In it, you also get 10,000 ops, but you can also increase the number of ops you want. Everything in the core plus you get custom variables, scenario inputs, full text executions, operation uses, and priority scenario executions as well. So as you can see, it's pretty cool, but this is for annually. But if we switch to monthly, the prices are going to be increased. So very simple. As you can see right here, this is how you do it. This is how you use make.com as a complete beginner. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. And I will catch you guys in the next video. And until then, take care and goodbye.